You don't like polygons or you do? Oh, I love polygons. <laughs> Shapes. Um, okay, so with similar polygons, first of all, do you know what a polygon is? A pentagon is a five-sided polygon. A polygon is any shape that is closed. Um, like... Right, that would be a polygon. That's a polygon. Closed, like it can't have an open, like that's not a polygon, right? It has to be closed off. These are terrible polygons. Um, a circle is not a polygon. Uh, right, so it's any shape that's closed with um, flat edges. Okay, um, so sh we are going to be talking about polygons that are similar. And similarity means they are um, proportional to each other. Excuse me. Forrest, Luke, zip it. Um, shapes that are similar, okay, are proportional to each other. So they're not congruent, right? They're not the same shape, but they are that one is smaller than the other, but has a ratio, a relationship to compare their sides. Okay. Um, so that's what a ratio is. It's just a comparison of things. So the way we write ratios is you can either write it as a fraction like this. Like if I'm going to compare A to B, I can say A to B like that. I can say A with a colon B, or I can say with the word A to B. Okay. So we're just comparing those numbers. Um, for instance, I would say in this room, <clears throat> the ratio of girls to boys is four to six, right? It's a four to six ratio. Um, if you reduced that, that's two to three, right? So that's a ratio. It's a comparison of whatever the things are that we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> when you're working with ratios, it is hugely important to reduce as low as you can go. So like what I just did right here, right? We had four to six, The four to six is not reduced. So we divide everything by two and we get two to three, okay? So always reduce and use the same units, okay? I don't wanna compare two feet to some number of inches, right? We wanna use everything in the same number of units if we're comparing the two quantities. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that with this example. Um, it says a pygmy rattlesnake averages 18 inches. A western diamondback averages five feet six inches. What is the ratio of the length of a pygmy rattlesnake to a diamondback? Okay, so we are doing rattlesnake. I usually do the comparisons as a fraction to diamondback. Okay, that's the ratio we're going to set up, um, which is what they're asking us for. What is the ratio, it says. Okay. Um, so what number do you think we're going to put on top? What number represents the rattlesnake? 18. The 18, right? Pygmy rattlesnake averages 18 inches. Okay, what number do you think we're going to put on bottom? Ooh, you fancy forest. Um, the diamondback is five feet, six inches, right? But what Forrest did was he converted, which is what you have to do because we cannot compare different units, right? We want to compare inches to inches. So what he did was he figured out that five feet is how many inches? 60. 60. Five times 12, right? 12 inches and a foot is 60, and then we have to add that six to it. So really what we're doing is 18 over 66. Okay, that's inches to inches. Are we done? No, what do we have to do? Simplify, Simplify it, we need to reduce, okay? Um, so 18 and 66 are both divisible by six. So if we divide by 6 and divide by 6, then I get what? 3 over 11. 3 over 11. 
So the ratio of a pygmy rattlesnake to a western diamondback is 3 to 11. That's the comparison of their lengths. Does that make sense? Oh, good. Um, okay, number two. This one says the measure of two complementary angles are in the ratio of one to three. What are the measure of those angles? Anyone know anything about any of those words? What does this mean? Complementary. Not congruent. Not equal. You're thinking congruent. They equal 90. They have a sum of 90. Okay? So we're saying we have two angles that add up to 90. True. what are you working on back there? I'm working on three notes. Mm-hmm. You haven't looked up me one time to see what I'm writing down to I'm put in your notes. Um, so here's what you do, okay? Here's what I want you to see. He's not even on the right note. He's not on the right note. Oh, okay, I'm finishing up the uh, Okay, you know Tuesday's assignment? No, we doing something from yesterday. I still haven't, yeah, no, that's not from yesterday. You can't do this. Okay. Tuesday's assignment. But that's not beneficial. Here's See, why. You can't even do um, So here's what we're doing. Listen, when they give you a ratio like this, one to three, okay, um, what I always say is, set it up with a factor, that it has a, some factor with it, okay? So one to three, we're gonna think of as one X to three X, okay? This X being the common factor in our problem, or multiplying by the same thing to get to where we need to be. Um, so what we do is if I know that the one angle is representing 1x, and I know the other angle is representing 3x, and I know that they have a sum of 90, what can I do with that 1x and 3x if their sum is 90? Set them equal to 90. What do you mean by that? What do I do with these two? What operation? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Active item. If they have a sum of 90, we're going to add them, right? Sum means add. So we're going to say the one angle, 1x, plus the other angle, 3x, should equal what? 4x. Well, it equals 4x, but what do we set? What number are we setting it equal to? The 90, right? 1x plus 3x should equal 90. Those two angles added together have to equal 90, okay? So simplify that. 1x plus 3x is 4x equals 90. And then we can divide by 4. So x comes out to 90 divided by 4 is 22.5. Okay. Now read the question again. It says the measure of two complementary angles is in the ratio of 1 to 3. What are the measures of the angles? And what do you mean? Like you, for one, it would be one, and then in parentheses it would be 22.5. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then for three, it would be three, and then in parentheses 22.5. Right. So we're just going to multiply that x value. Um, the one angle was 1x, right? The other angle was 3x. So 1 times 22.5 means our first angle is just 22.5 degrees. Okay, our second angle is 3 times that x value, which is what? Anyone have their calculator handy? 67.5. Okay, um, how can we check if that's right? They add up to 90, right? 22.5 plus 67.5 is 90. So if they add up to 90, then you know you did it right. Okay? Questions on that? Okay. Um, so that's ratios, but then there's this thing called an extended ratio. 
And that just is three or more numbers getting compared. So instead of just A to B, now it'll be like A to B to C, okay? Um, but you do it the same way. You attach an X to each one of your numbers. And then you think of that as your angle or your side length or whatever it is you're working with. So this says the length of the sides of a triangle are in the extended ratio 2 to 4 to 5. The perimeter is 77. What is the length of the longest side? So you have this ratio of 2 to 4 to 5. What do we say we have to do with a ratio? They have to be the same. What do you mean? Oh, units. The units have to be the same. Okay, but we're good there because they didn't attach any units to it. So we're assuming they already did that for us. What do we do up here? When they gave us a ratio of 1 to 3, we did what with it? Uh, you can make it a fraction. We actually don't have to make it a fraction right now. We have to attach something to it. The X, okay? So each number is going to get an X <coughs> attached to it. So we're going to say 2X to 4X oops, to 5X, okay? We're just going to attach whatever our common factor is because if there is a ratio, there is a common factor that those numbers are using, okay? So every time you see this set up, just think attach an X to it. Now, it says this is the length of the sides of a triangle. So if you just set up a triangle right now, it'd be like saying this triangle has a side of 2x, this side is a side, oops, not 3, 4x, and this side is 5x, right? That's what it's saying. That's the comparison of their sides. So the question is, what do we do with that information? Look what they told you right here. The perimeter is 77 inches. And we know all of this. What can you do with that? Have it equal 77. Add what? Have it equal 77. Have what equal 77? Equal, uh, three, five. Right. Those three sides, right? The perimeter of a triangle is just the sum of the sides, right? So we're gonna say 2x plus 4x plus 5x should equal the perimeter, right? Add the three sides up. 2x plus 4x plus 5x should equal 77. Now what? Combine them. Combine them. So 2x plus 4x is 6x. 6x plus 5x is 11x. So you get 11x equals 77. Now what? Divide. Divide by 11. So x is 7. <coughs> okay, now here's the deal. The question they asked is not what is x. The question is, what is the longest side of that triangle? Which is what? 35. 35, right? The longest side of this triangle is the 5x, and we know x is 7. So the longest side is going to be 5 times 7, or 35 what? X. No. Not x. Inches. We are working in inches here. So the longest side of that triangle is 35 inches. How could you check your answer? If you put x times 7 and x, all of them. Right. So this is 35. 2 times 7 would be 14. 4 times 7 is 28. What should that equal? 77. 77. If we add these all together, it should equal the perimeter, 77 which it does. Questions on that? <coughs> kind of want to make you all show me your notes right now and give you credit for them if you did them because I feel like some of you didn't write a thing down. Um, thank you.
I believe you did because you re-engaged. Um, any questions on that? So 